Ladies and gentlemen, introducing you to the fighters here. We do it in the super lightweight division. This one, sponsored by the MMA Fight Store. Introducing to you first, standing across in the blue corner, weighed in officially 75.8 kilos. Travelled to us tonight from Sydney, New South Wales. He's trained out of the Lions Den Academy. His record, five fights, three wins and the two losses. This is Leon Katsiara. And his opponent, standing across in the red corner, tipped the scale 73.8 kilos. Hailing from the Gold Coast, trained out of the Boon Chu gym. He has two fights to his name tonight, looking for win number one. Give it up, this is Matt Frustocko! <laughs> Referee in charge of the action, Mr. Phil Cassidy. Fight number three here tonight, brought to you by MMA Fight Store. Now with their convenient Brisbane store, open and running. It's getting quality equipment easy. Visit MMAFightStore.com.au to upgrade your fight kit today. Oh, immediately. It was as you called it, mate. The Boonchu product is looking to take this thing to the ground and Katsigaris is having none of it. Looks to be like a 50-50 position here. Oh, a big one comes around, but it could have been to the back of the head. For Stocko did say he's worked his, his cage uh, attacks and defense extensively for this fight, so we'll, we'll see. It looks like it shows he's at least being able to keep Katsiaris off him, who is no small task in the grappling department. Oh, beautiful knee there, and he uses the knee to then upgrade almost to a body lock. I love seeing that maturity in our amateur fighters. Using a strike to upgrade the grappling position, even when you're on the feet, it's beautiful. Yeah, that deep underhook from Katsiaros will be a problem for, for Stockel. Those shots, they don't seem like much, but they do add up. And it gives your opponent something to think about. For Stockel is able to take the double unders, but he falls down into a bottom position. Immediately uses the underhook to get up and eats a knee for his troubles. Yeah, big knee. It looked like he was attempting some sort of a lat drop, but ended up almost pulling out. I mean, it's the golden rule. You always want their hips to land before yours. Otherwise, something bad is going to happen. And have that. It was in the form of a knee from Katsiaris. And it's difficult to tell people who haven't been in these positions before just how grueling it is. Especially these guys. They're doing it at a pace, which is fantastic to watch. It's very easy to slow down, and these guys are having none of that. Taking turns to strike now. Right hand finds home, and there's a head kick that lands, but for a Stockel just charges in with a tight waist. This is where Frostocker wants to be. If he's comfortable on the cage wrestling this, you can't ask for a better position than a rear body lock. 100%. He's He's threatening with that hook as well. Katsiaris turns, and it's a single leg it looks to be from Frustockel. Back on the rear body lock. This is definitely where he wants to be. Oh, and again, again. he ends up on the bottom. It's something about, he, he might want something that he maybe he gets in training, but then sometimes when it's just not working in the cage, you've got to give up on it. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what was going on there. But he... Looking to attack from the guard. Definitely keeping Katsiaris guessing, but looking to play more of a guard game than stand up at the moment. It's hard. Is he going to eat a lot of shots down there trying to set up attacks if he doesn't get one soon? No, 100%, especially with that butterfly almost caught now. A very high-paced round for how much grueling grappling there was. I mean, against the cage, in the takedowns, for Stockel going down, twice he was able to get back up to his feet. He wanted something in that body lock, but it's become a mistake twice. Uh, absolutely. Um, I'm sure his corner will address that now. I mean, especially a vet like Daniel Almeida. He was in some good positions where he could, could have done possibly something different, but it looked like he wanted something and it doesn't seem to be there. We'll see if he can adapt and use that tight waist to get something else in this second round. And here we see there was a fumble there from him. 
He uses that underhook to get up, and it looks like Katsiaris was biding his time to just land that knee. should prove to be a very interesting round. There's a lot of data there for both fighters. For Stockel looking a little bit wild on the feet. I like that level change to then throw the strikes, especially if you've been looking to get into the grappling. Katsiaris with a very, very strong overhook is able to turn it. Yeah, he is heavy there. Katsiaris is putting a lot of weight on for Stockel here and, and it's hard to work there. You will start to gas if you get pinned on the fence like this. Absolutely. I mean, it becomes survival at that point. It's, it's, you have to fight for everything. You have to fight to not be struck. You have to fight to just get an underhook. You have to fight to maintain an overhook. And the head control from Katsiaris is a whole other kettle of fish as well. That's fantastic control. Yeah, it looks to me like for Stocker wants, wants a reversal. Um, that it, it might not come for a while, so you yeah. might have to make something happen here. You can get lost in that trap, can't you, mate? Absolutely. Those little punches from Katsiaris, they, they will add up. They're exhausting to keep eating those and have him leaning on you. Oh, absolutely. Especially with your chest. The more you get tired, the more your chest expands and draws, and then you're hitting punches. It's throwing your breath out as well. It counts for a lot. And a huge takedown as Katsiaris runs down for Stockel. And he ends up in half guard right in front of us here. Yeah, that was very smart. He was not rushing. Um, he, it was very nice, like he just set that up. Over time, wore his uh, opponent down, wore for Stockel down, and then the takedown came easy. And as we mentioned before in the previous flyweight women's bout, being in your opponent's corner on the bottom, <laughs> it's not what you want. It's <laughs> not what you want. Experience. Absolutely. And Katsiaris is firing punches there. For Stockel just trying to frame on that arm to at least alleviate some of these punches. Very, very apt feedback from the corner of Katsiaris. Don't let him shift his hips. Don't even let him start to begin any sort of attacks from the bottom. Yeah, very smart advice. It's so hard to execute jiu-jitsu here as well when you're pinned up against the fence and your body is essentially in a banana shape. You, yeah. It's very hard to attack and, and you'll get beat up here. 100%. The alignment of the spine counts for so much. And, and with... Cassiar is pushing in on him like that as well. It's You can't extend your body. You can't use some of the biggest muscles in your core to be able to do anything. He's pinned, like especially here, where the legs are just crumpled up. Katsiaris imposing these punches, and Tristockel just seems to be at the mercy of his opponent. That 10-second clapper was just the, the signal to go to work and solidify another round, and Katsiaris does exactly that, mate. Yeah, he's not looking uh, very tired at all. That's, uh, that's a very smart round from Katsiaris. He didn't rush. He had a good position, but he didn't rush. Um, and it will pay dividends in the final round, I suspect. I did like some of the setups earlier on where Christockel was going high, high, sorry, low, then high. But we didn't get to see a lot more of that because it just went straight to the grappling department. Yeah. It looks to me like Christockel is comfortable attacking on the cage. Um, but he's struggling when he's pinned against the cage, and Katsiaris is absolutely just taking advantage of that weakness. As we head into round three of this competition, very similar to the previous fight as well, we could see two rounds down. This time through Stockel, can he pull something down? Can he get Katsiaris down, sorry? Or can he pull something out of the bag and take this fight in the final round? Katsiaris is looking very, very composed. Looking very calm and picking his shots here. Great sprawl there. Fristockel just happy to go to guard almost. Yeah. It didn't work out too well in the last round. 
<laughs> yes. I At agree. least he's got a little bit of space here, but it looks to be more of the same. Yeah, I, yeah. Katsiaris is going to look to pin him up against the cage, just like last round. You saw he shifted his head. Like you said, he, he breaks spinal alignment, and it just makes jujitsu attacks so difficult. Um, and then it's more of the same, getting beat up. That's exactly right. I mean, we're seeing it. This is just a continuation of the last round, almost. Now that he's been able to push for, for Stockel, sorry, all the way over to the cage, he's literally frustra frustrating for Stockel, which is a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> but it's literally what's happening. I mean, he's doing two things fantastically. He's not letting for Stockel get up, and he's just going to work. Yeah, it looks like Verstoppel is just trying to uh, get off the cage so he can actually try and attack, but uh, Katsiaris is just not letting him, which is really smart, and it, he'll end up spending the whole round here getting beat up if he, if he doesn't make something happen. And if you Katsiaris, there's no incentive to not it, just yeah, keep, exactly. keep going to work. This could be the, the whole fight in the bag at this point. Yeah, although Verstoppel does have that deep overhook now. This is what he wanted. He did shoot in and then almost pulled guard off the sprawl. I mean... If this is what he wants, we need to see something from him here. Yeah. Because Katsiaris is just not going to let up. Yeah, he's just a bit too smart. He's just not given for Stockel a, a chance to use his, execute his game at all, which is, uh, that's just smart fighting. It's almost become like, like in the phone booth fighting. It's just, it's <laughs> just forehead to forehead boxing at this point, except the difference being for Stockel is just getting crushed into the corner. Yeah, Katsiaris is posturing up now. That's where he'll start to land big punches. When he starts to get his eyes over for Stockel's eyes and, and lift his chest up, that's where the massive punches come down. I mean, it's posture in the ultimate sense, isn't it? Yeah. Huge punches and goes back to work. He's hitting the body as well. It's all points. It's all money for Katsiaris here in the third round of this super lightweight bout. Yeah, for Stock was looking exhausted here. And with, Cassiaris is just happy to keep doing the same thing. With 20 seconds on the clock, I mean, it's, it's now or never. We need to see uh, some sort of crazy leg lock or something out of Frostockle because with every punch, the fight is winding down and it's almost become a certainty at this point. Cassiaris going to work. Oh, the nail in the coffin was that ground and pound from Cassiaris. All class as well. Embraces his opponent. A fantastic showing from Katsiaris. It was a shutout, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, absolutely. He dominated pretty much every second of that bout. That was a very impressive performance. It was him. fantastic. He didn't get the win, but sometimes against guys that want to... that lure you into those grappling exchanges. If he went too hard, if he didn't watch his P's and Q's, he could have ended up in a submission. But it was a shutout. He didn't put himself in any position where he was in danger on the ground or on the cage. He had very measured striking to be able to put Frostockel on the cage. Never in danger, Katsiaris. It appears like he takes a very dominant victory here and it's because of what we're seeing in this replay right now, mate. Posturing up, eyes over the eyes like you were saying and that's where the big punches started coming. Fantastic fight here from Katsiaris. As we go to the official decision. All right, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, put your hands together for both fighters here. What a fantastic contest. After three rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge AJ Perry scores at about 29 to 25. Judge Claire Fryer scores at about 29 to 27. And Judge Steve Robertson judges the contest at 29 to 26, all to your winner by unanimous decision. And it goes to the blue corner, Leon Katiaris.